Brian, it's finally here. It's finally here. Week three. The ogre? No, we're in week three, the most anticipated match. This is it. This is what we've wanted. We've been waiting for. Dyer's pick. Oh, I'm excited for it. This is the matchup, and I definitely, Morbin's definitely done their homework. Look at those first two bands. We've seen those heroes go to work for them in the past. The Chen yep. BN. Uh, Ghosts oh. as. Yeah, and the Chen ban for me is really exciting as well because uh, that's not a ban you typically see in the first phase or even in the second phase. It's yeah. really not popular right now, so yeah, they've definitely these been are clearly two teams that have done their homework. Yeah, no kidding. They, they must have saw the last couple of series and just watched the havoc that they were able to wreak on their opponents. So, like I said, week three, Morbin Esports versus Ghost. We have uh, a new, hopefully frequent visitor and participant in the stream, Andy the Stats Man taking care of the stats for today, which is fantastic. Welcome, Andy. Pleasure to have you. So, we're in. And I do think this is like the Morbin drafts that we've seen before. Is this going to go a little bit differently? The Dying early bam. fighting uh, kind of style? Or what do you what do you think we're going to see out of them today? Well, the lone druid is really interesting to me because he can either play after a Radiance Rush, which means he kind of wants to wait a little while to fight, or he can play for some earlier game items. Uh, Armlet was popular for quite some time. Uh, Maelstrom is also mm -hmm. something that we see from time to time. So I think it could definitely be an early group and push just based off of uh, how well Lone Druid time. pushes off of Summon Spirit Rare and um, the Demolish ability that it picks up at higher ranks. The Dazzle, of course, just being a strong utility support, something that really can fill a lot of different roles, a lot of different styles of play. So. Uh, a little early to see, but the Invoker ban and the Spirit Breaker ban make me think that we could see a lot of early game aggression. They want to take away the Tornado EMP combo that can sort of slow down a push. And uh, yeah, the Shadow Fiend ban also band. plays to that style of thought. Yeah, and the, the, and the changes to the Lone Druid should definitely be noted too. I mean, not that I've seen a Scepter on him anytime soon, but that's an interesting dynamic <laughs> that might come into play. But uh, a couple changes, the Savage Roar, the, uh, the new addition. Um, have not really seen that Lone Druid's not really some a hero you see Five too often. Seconds. So this might not this might have been something Ghost wasn't quite prepared for, but um, it's early in the draft, so they can still time. kind of pick around it. Fortunately, so yeah, we'll see. Um, I mean, right now Morbin is really focused on taking away AOE Wave Clear, and Savage Roar gives a lot of ability for Lone Druid to just bang. sort of push up on a tower and then make people go away for a while. So it'll be interesting to see if this is going to be one of those really, really hefty push strategies uh, or if they're going to be going for a different style of play. Certainly the AA is going to make that a little bit difficult for Morbin to pull off. Uh, Ice Blast is a very good ability and will mitigate some of what the Dazzle can do in team fights. I love I love the ogre pick. It's just it's it's hard to make him work into a draft, honestly. I mean, the, the hero standalone is just fantastic with all the changes. I mean. For an early support, granted he's not ranged, but he makes up for it with ridiculous uh, base regen. Uh, his armor is out of this out of this world. <laughs> it's like what six or seven base. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, and really, at level two, you can you can just go ganking it early orb of venom and just run around and wreak havoc. So um, definitely a really good pick. Yeah, we'll see if that's what they go for. They uh, kind of concealed really their draft. The too. They kind of concealed their draft. You pick the two supports, get them out of the way right away, and. He's still, Five seconds. you know, Morbin's not exactly sure which way Ghost is going to go, so... Um, and they see the Oracle Band, so they've definitely been doing Reserve their homework. <laughs> you get a yeah. Spectre pick. Dyer's pick. Oh, Spectre. Okay, so they might go after some sort of global strat um, with the AA and the Spectre. We might see a Zeus picked up at some point. Um, even though he's not super popular, he's still a decent option for that. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh. Embers or we could end up seeing a different mid laner who just brings a lot of kill potential and wants a little bit of support finishing off roaming kills. So that could be a Queen of Pain or another mobility based mid with a lot of burst potential. Yeah, they, they probably would have liked to see the Invoker there as well too, just because it kind of follows in um, with what you just yeah, described. Sunstrike's but you really definitely, nice. Yeah, I agree with you. They definitely want somebody to kind of make space for that Spectre because I mean, you can go. build early fighting Spectre, but it's just, it pales in comparison to a, a Radiance Five Rush, seconds. obviously, so. Yeah, we, we definitely saw that one game where the Spectre went after um, Drums sure, and Vanguard, and then and then Defusal. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's viable in certain scenarios, but it's obviously not ideal. That's not that's not really what you want to go for. Yeah, it? that's that's not what you want to go. Like you can no. you can compare that style of build, which is <laughs> you know it, it works, it does a certain thing, um, against the effectiveness of if you can get a radiance, having that radiance, and just look at the world of difference that can make on Spectre. We've seen um, a my lack was more about my slow pop so than I made last time. I'm hoping that they take that into consideration too. You're going to need a little bit more locked up with Ember Spirit. We've seen a lot of successful Ember Spirit so far in the last uh, couple Yeah, of weeks. I'm really liking Queen of Pain here. Uh, she can build an Orchid first, which gives that silence you really need against Ember Spirit. She has that kind of map mobility where she can find different kills. She has enough burst to pick people off. And then if she doesn't quite get them, oh, Tinker works for that as well. Also uh, very good. With the sheep more. <laughs> Wow, that's been a while. That's a blast from the past seeing a Tinker, huh? I'm okay. I have, I have not seen a lot of Tinker play, yeah. mostly because the game has revolved around a lot more early team fighting, uh, as opposed to sort of mid-game team fighting, where Tinker has his travels, has his blink up, and starts to build a little bit of a mana pool so we can actually start to spam March. Uh, but Ten I think they ago. I think they will go for a March Tinker this game because they're going to want to have some wave clear. And a lot of that Ten wave seconds. clear from the mid lane has been banned out, as I said earlier. Invoker's gone, Windrunner's gone, Shadow Fiend's gone. Yeah. So having that There's March lockdown time. could be really effective, but Morbin might not be going after that style. Ember Spirit, not much of a pushing mid. Very strong early game character, very strong late game character. But not someone I would really categorize as a pusher in the early game. So we'll see what these next two picks are for them, and we'll see how the Tinker works into that. We could definitely see that, though. I mean, I, with the low injury to the Ember, especially with a, a bots rush, you could definitely see them going for the split push. So the Tinker will help combat that, keep the lanes pushed out. So hopefully freeing up some space for Spectre to, to do her thing. So I don't know. I, I'm so excited for this match. <laughs> I'm <laughs> really, 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 really excited. Yeah, I mean, like, I can see where Ghost is going, but I, I still don't know. Morbin could still take this a couple directions, so I want to see uh, where they go with this. Yeah, and that's, that's one and thing we've too. They both, both teams have very deep hero pools, so, I mean, we could literally see anything. So that's that's probably the most exciting part about the draft. Ten seconds to go. I mean, yeah. when you first saw the Chen, you know, what were you oh, thinking? Oh, here we go. Radiance ban. The ban. Okay. So this might be a little bit more of a ganking style team as opposed to a pushing style team. That bounty hunter is going to want to get up track as fast as he can, and that ancient apparition is going to be very vulnerable. Tinker is going to be very visible, even if he buys a blink dagger. So is this a position one lone druid off lane? Are they, are they more of still looking to grab a carry here, or what do you think? You know, I don't think this is going to be to go. a safe lane lone druid because that's just not very good. He really needs the experience to be effective. I don't know if I want to see it off lane. So we might see a mid lone druid and a safe lane ember spirit because if I'm if I'm playing a draft with a bounty hunter, I want to be able to get a kill in the off lane. I want to be able to rotate around, have a, a core that can participate in picking off one of the supports. And lone druid to me is not that kind of character. So we could we could see this lone druid mid, we could see it off lane, um, but I would imagine that the Ember Spirit will be the uh, at, at least the two, yeah, if not the one go. position character here, just because of how strong he gets with farm as yeah, the game I progresses. I, I I actually would love to see a lone druid versus Tinker. Oh my gosh! Doom, that's, that's good. Like a, yeah. Okay. Um, they are going to be. I think they're going to run the Spectre aggressive because they want to see the Doom against the Lone Druid. Yeah, that's a that's a that's um, a really greedy lineup, I think, though. That is a very that's greedy a very lineup. I don't know if they can run it aggressive, and I don't know if the Doom will have a lot of. Well, maybe since he's a bounty hunter, he's going to be out of lane a lot, so maybe the Doom can get some farm that way. Yeah, um, Doom can still hold his own. So if they yeah, if they throw him by himself, I don't see that go. as being an issue. As long, I mean, it all it really depends on the jungle creep you can get early on too. If you can get the, the satyr oh, with the aura, I mean that's be. Oh man, okay. So I I'm thinking this is Viper off lane. Yeah, that it could be it could be Viper mid. Man. Mid is, Viper is very strong against uh, Tinker. Of course, we have our pauses as a standard. Eh, it's all good. It's going to be a short pause, I think. Just making sure everything's all figured out on Doom's end. Yeah. Um, but we could we could definitely see this Viper mid to punish the Tinker. Viper's very strong early game. Tinker, not as strong early game. Um, but the Bounty Hunter is going to have a hard time getting kills until the Viper 6. 
and he's going to have a hard time getting kills in the Lone Druid's lane without some fortunate entangles. Uh, so, we will see how much lane presence the Bounty Hunter has here. Iron Jesus has been known to be very grateful. Get some early entangles. Oh, look we'll at see, this we'll see how much lane Look at has. that, he's got everything. Wow, oh my god. <laughs> look at the jumps that that defu uh, soul diffuser, <laughs> holy crap. Oh good, I just crashed. It's alright, we're still paused. Great. Um, like you said, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a good cast unless uh, multiple people were disconnected. So. We had severe uh, severe technical difficulties. All right, carry on. Steam still thinks I'm in Dota, so I'm gonna have to exit Steam all the way to reconnect. All right, Tinker's got the null tally, so he's gonna want to go for that early early game. Uh, Skip the skip the bottle rush and just get the early CS. It looks like we're gonna get a couple of yeah, early boards out here know if the he's... bounty hunter. He doesn't know if he's going up against the Viper, in which case he would really need it. I think he uh, is. Or the yeah, Lone Druid, in which case play, he play around. This is safe play number. Okay. Yeah, your Viper's definitely a bit. That makes a lot of sense. Um, the bounty hunter's not, in my opinion, the bounty hunter may not have as much success. Uh, given the, the lanes they picked, but that's definitely going to be a lot harder on the Tinker than the Lone Druid would be. Oh, for sure. For sure. Which is why I think they, uh, they <laughs> took their shoutouts. 30 seconds to showtime. <laughs> the pre shout shoutouts. Yep, Doom, Doomba's gonna be in the off lane. He's got his, uh, he's got his mango. It's, it's gonna be hard to get in that creep camp, though. That's the only really big downside to the dire Doom off lane. He's gonna have to sneak into the enemy jungle, which is not really what you want to go for. He could chill at his uh, ancients creep camp. Yep, he just has to pray for something good. Hoof stomp really wouldn't do too well for him. Right here. Off. So we'll see. Yep, they're just gonna secure the runes. They're gonna give it up to respectively to each mid. And go their separate ways here. So we're in, man. We're in. Looks like they're gonna do the ag uh, aggressive tri lane with the specters to ensure her early farm. The Quelling Blade early on. Pretty standard stuff here. Ember safe lane, as you suggested. Oh, and he gets a really nice early D ward here. That is huge. That is huge. Yeah, taking away those first wards can be very Another detrimental to the success and the safety. The Captain Curtis gets a nice D ward off in the mid, so. I don't know, who do, who do you think who's favored in this lane here? The Tinker? I mean, a Viper obviously is a strong laner regardless, but... I don't know. I feel Tinker's like... gonna have a tough time in lane. He, he will, but, but at the same time, I, I think... Oh god, Courier Snipe. They, they tried this before, too. We saw him do this last week. Oh, with week. the Bounty Hunter? Yeah, they got it last time, but without, without the Bottle Rush here... He's just gonna be sitting there kind of idling, wasting time. Here, so. Well, it certainly gives Bounty Hunter something to do while he's waiting for the rest of the cores to pick uh -oh. up levels. Uh oh, so kills they are pop possible. early sentry and they're gonna they're gonna get the, some detection on that Bounty Hunter. And he's <laughs> he's not welcome. He's not welcome. Let's see, and it is the Lone Druid off lane. Sorry, bud. Yeah, it's okay. I'll save my dreams for another day. <laughs> no, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, it's he's it's just a strong off laner in general. My real question is when their when their push timing is going to be because with the viper pick they're definitely going for a push timing, um, so it it I'm curious as to whether it'll be waiting on the mech from the viper or whether they'll be waiting on a specific level from the lone druid uh -oh. before they go. Doom had to pop his sav early. He gets away with scorched earth. Illusion. I gave quite a bit of harass there. Looks like they got both flame guard and the and the searing chains on him, so he'll be okay for now. Doom can definitely still hold his own in the offlane, but he's got to be careful. And okay, so they they're wary of the courier snipe, but he's yeah. he he walks to his bottle. He's not putting up with that. And Curtis is a, a very sad bounty hunter. <laughs> so Druid has gone for the Iron Talon on uh, for laning. Yeah, I'm unfortunately I I'm not too well versed in my lone Druid uh, my lone 
Druid players. Well, certainly so. not since the changes. He's he hasn't been very popular. Yeah, I, I know the quelling so blade was very prominent. I um, but I, I feel like taking the time to micro it to take out a creep. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It just seems kind of maybe it's okay. So I think yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna take time. And he's just gonna go to the, uh, the hard camp he has by his ancient. So maybe that's just okay. A side that makes a lot tool. more sense. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be used a lot more sporadically, but uh, yeah, it still serves its purpose regardless. So. Yeah, see, Viper, I mean, he's he's definitely got the CS, but he's gone through almost all his region. All that's left yes, is the Fairy Fire here. So, huh. not going as well. I'm kind of surprised that Tinker's been able to trade. Yeah, he's been very good about um, the laser spam, so, because, you know, the, the reduced accuracy for the Viper right, the right clicks. Yeah, the blind's definitely very, very clutch here. So, it, it helps him try to no. trade evenly with the CS, and he's also able to spam it out now that he's got the bottles, so. Given a little bit of rune control, yeah, they, can, they can do a lot with that. Well, he's not going to need rune control. They're going to be committing the courier to the mid lane. They're going to be bottle crowing since the oh, tinker wow, is. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely <laughs> is the one spot. courier. Good luck, everybody else. Yeah. Well, out, out, in the all Spectre honesty, Specter. Yeah, Specter's fine with the side shop anyway, so that shouldn't really be an issue here. If Specter needs to buy anything, it's going to be a radiance, and that's not going to be for a while. So. Tinker will have plenty of time. Yeah, and you can build one on one with the side shop, so it's not an issue whatsoever. So. This is probably the most calm early game I think we've ever seen. <laughs> Radiance top towers hurt. It's very chill. The, the bounty hunter is just kind of dewarding right now because the lanes don't have a lot of kill potential until again Viper six and Ember Spirit has a Radiance little bit more burst. It's getting there because they're really sacrificing the Dazzle CXP, which is what you need to do. Yeah, it's... and Luncher is gonna get gone on, but uh -oh. yeah, there's. Ogre was in position. Uh, he did mid. he did opt for the early orb of Adam and uh, actually a second point in the Ow. night. Bounty Hunter might die here in mid. Oh my god. The last little march tick was wow. just what got him as he was running out of range. Wow. Uh, he dove, he took a couple tower hits there trying to get the Tinker and they almost had him, but a little bit of greed. Yeah. A little too antsy there. Tinker is going to be happy with that and Mech, Mech is going to be the first enemy choice here for the Viper and he actually is in a lot of trouble. A Viper pops his ult. Obviously no track, but he's gonna go down regardless. It's a TP rotation in, but too little, too late here. This fourteen thirty-seven makes a rotation. Unfortunately, an AA can't do too much at level two. So. <laughs> no, not really. And Viper um, actually still he has, he has a ton of regen now, so he's gonna be able to stay in this lane for quite a bit now. And they actually were able to take out the sentry, so bounties here. So who do you think won that trade? Uh, well, I'm oh, thinking well, that Morbin's gonna now, capitalize uh... on it. Yep, they're gonna get a second. <laughs> Uh, ask me that one more time. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> so, so, in terms of in terms of Tinker trading a kill for a death, uh, do you think that's worth it for him to get slightly accelerated items, or do you think that losing out on the EXP and farm is not uh -oh. uh, ideal for him? Lone Druid Ooh, got top lane. Absolutely blown up here. Um, Doom's gonna go down in exchange. Oh my gosh, all over them. So we have no kills for four and a half minutes, and all of a sudden there's people dying in every single regeneration. Yeah, see, this is a point. You had to say to it, man. This is one of the most yeah. tame early games. <laughs> it's, the cast, it's the caster's curse, man. I can't Radiant help it. So, three points in uh, in the flame guard, and Doom really can't do too much in that scenario. He's got his tricoles up, but that doesn't really help him when he's getting attacked, so. Radiant's top tower. Uh, yeah, a lot of Doom's safety comes in the fast HP regen off of Scorched Earth, and um, Flame Guard mitigates that completely. Got, so, very difficult the, lane for them. The da Big Daddy Troll is his, uh, is his creep too, which literally does nothing for him, so... <laughs> uh, not a lot early game. No, he was a little unfortunate with the draw there, so... This Bounty Hunter's doing work, he didn't have boots, he doesn't care. He's gonna go check and see if there's any stacks here. And there are not here, Tinker's... Pretty much on his own here. Well, AA is going to start stacking. He's got a, a hard camp there stacked, and Ogre's been pulling to the other hard camp, so. Uh oh. They, yeah, they saw that ward. They know he's here. I have to get sentries out pretty quickly here, because that ward actually is going to be very obnoxious later on. So, we haven't really mentioned this, but a Spectre atop the CS board doing a fantastic job. Charlie and succeeding. Um. And I, yeah, sh no, no, she didn't get credit for the kill, but she got assist gold for uh, taking down that druid mid. Or, uh, yeah, so what they're doing, um, I fondly refer to as the pub strat, where they kind of throw a couple heroes, multiple heroes out there, then if either one has a good game, uh, they can transition into the one spot, be the hard carry, and win the game. Uh, that's named after the fact that pubs tend to pick, you know, five carries. 
and then if one carry has a good game, know, then man. that carries the carry. I don't know if it's this new patch, but so, I had a game where we had people refusing to pick a carry. <laughs> Which That's is like, crazy. unbeknownst to me, that actually is a thing. That actually happened. <laughs> Normally, yeah, it's like Bad. the five carry wow. strat. Alright, let's, you know, pick all carries and hope for the best. Alright, so Tinker yeah, getting closer and closer. Uh, they're actually gonna go. To... Oh, there's the net and they're coming to play. They're gonna go. They're gonna use and the, the deal on the Viper. And he might still get out of here. Shallow Grave very early, very early. And Doom's actually with the Poison Touch. He's gonna take a lot of tower damage. He might fall in the exchange here. Spectre goes out. They're gonna try to get down the Viper. Yep. Reality oh. is used. Oh my gosh, this is not the trade. Fairy Fire keeping him alive a little longer. Ogre swings in. They're gonna try to get two here, and they will. No grave available. Uh oh. Wow. Uh oh. Urn tried to take him. There out. were so many characters <laughs> that were so <laughs> close to dying. Uh oh. And actually, Lone Tinker Druid almost comes died in. on the back end. Double D with Lone Druid is actually and able to take out the Spectre. Technical difficulties. Radiance tough. Doom chaos. almost died on the back end. Tinker almost died on the back end. And AA almost died on the back end. So they did a really good job of managing the damage there. Radiance um, chaos here in the middle lane. Lone Druid picking up a kill there, which is. Definitely gonna help them out. So Spectre, um, aside from that death though, I was able to. Nope. Okay, so this is an early fight build too. We're gonna see the urn and then in the drum. So knowing that the the radiance is something that's probably out of reach, at least for the time being. Definitely gonna go for the earlier fight build to kind of go with the momentum. Of I'm kind of surprised actually, since the Spectre has so much farm and has had such an easy time farming in lane, uh, that we're not seeing a little bit more prioritization against the radiance. Uh, I mean, they, they could still go Radiance after Urn drums, Duke's gonna drop it depends top. on whether or not it's... We have three heroes rotating, and no track yet, half a level away from track, so these fights are going to be dramatically different once that's up. They're trying to deny the tower, I don't think he's going to be able to do it in time. Oh, oh poor Ogre. Poor Ogre, Ember is able to get the, secure the last hit on the tower, and he's, so he's going to go for the 10 minute rune instead of going into the Ogre, which is probably the best call. Uh, that is a stack for Tinker, though. That's a three stack. Yeah, he needs it. He's uh, he's got his BOTs now, so. But like you said, the mana pool is just not going to be there for quite a bit here. And Ogre is caught between a rock and a hard place here. <laughs> yeah, sorry, pal. A remnant in. And actually, Spectre, another ult committed here. Let's see if she actually go ends up going in here. Nope. Oh, they were going after the Viper with that Spectre ult, who is in the. Jungle he's just rapidly so tanky. fleeing with Doom up. He's so tanky here. He'll actually he'll go down here. For the final hit going to the Spectre. So drums will be just about finished. What do you go next here for Tinker? I think you have to go for the blink. I blink don't the... really believe that there is another. Okay. I just feel like there's not too much of it. I, mean, I, I can't can't really see him pushing now as it is. So. If he is going to, yeah, no, like but it's more of a safety thing. thing. Oh, He's yeah. got to pick it up sure. at some point. I don't think going after a sheep stick first is really a viable oh, no, no, thing for him sheep with the bounty hunter. Sheep stick. I was referring more so, yeah. to something a little more, a little more tame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be very aggressive with that point. Like it's going to be a passive point. The Spectre, so she's very tanky early on. So I mean, the, every every time that ultimate's off cooldown, they're looking to take a fight here. So. Both were lost. <laughs> That's a heck of a stat. Dyer's bottom towers get so the business. It's like Lone Druid is going to play the farm more here. And he's got the hand of mice to kind of secure the late game for him. So. Yeah, I wonder. I, I don't think that's going to be a radiant since we did see the Midas come out. So we'll probably see. Uh, yeah, if you want to go super either greedy, go Midas and radiance. <laughs> Farm yeah, you want to go super greedy on Druid, two Midas's. No, did he? Because you can put one on the bear. Yeah, I've You can put one on the it. bear, they don't share a cooldown. And Spectre's all by her lonesome here, she I've, needs some rotations here quick. They got track up on her, track is up for the bounty hunter. Oh, and then we have boulders on the Doom here. Oh, so if he dies we get to see the tiny little Doom links. And they're actually going to end up getting the bounty hunter here. Okay, picking up the kill. Looks like... We're gonna have double well, here earn, comes maybe? the Tinker spam. Yeah. And BOTs are finished up on the uh, the Ember Spear too, so. Just see quite a bit of split push coming out of him. He's gonna have a lot of harm quickly. He's second on his team, third net worth overall, but those BOTs will definitely help uh, a 
help out with that. Free trip to the well every oh, so Oh, Spectre's often. going in deep. Yeah, she has no fear here. Absolutely no fear. And, and Haunt's out. out. Oh, like... She is out. Well done. The drums in the urn <laughs> proven to be very useful for the for the ball's deep strat for the Spectre. Yeah, I've, I've really never seen a Spectre played this way in the early game, so... This is really fascinating for me. So I may have to try this. Quite comfortable with innovating, so I might see a few tower. unorthodox things here. And quite comfortable with aggression. Oh, bounty hunter places the sentry, but is unable to get vision on the, the sentry right there. Uh, do something about their bottom just tower. Just out of the cliff. Unfortunate. And this is a double uh, drums build for ghosts. Looks like the doom's gonna follow the same route. Dyer's mid tower won't last much longer. There's some aggression here. They don't have detection. He's walking out of the sentry. And he's Ooh, the ward. Free here. A little too far behind. Yeah. Out of sentry range is good to go. Okay, so Spectre, is it now defu is it defusal time or is this still? I mean, because there's so much farm. She still has 1,700 gold too. So, is this still possible radiance? I think they're playing a wait and see. Yeah. It could be a radiant still. Uh, Spectre's had a lot of success off of this drums and urn. I think they've paid for themselves at this point oh, um, in terms of XP gain and map space created. So Radiant's I would not be surprised to see a Radiance after this, especially with uh, how safely she's farming and how well Jeez. Tinker's finding Dyer's space. Kidding. At the same I mean, time. she's by and far the leader on the net worth by over gold, so. No reason not to. Tough his bounty, he's structures. having trouble now. He's Radiant he had a lot of early game success, part of four kills early Radiant's on, but they they're definitely top privy top to what he's going, <laughs> what he's got going top. on here. Radiant's bottom tower seen better days. Yeah, I mean he he made a lot of space for his team just sitting mid. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to move around a lot, just put the pressure the tinker, but it ended up not working super well. He traded one for one in the early game, and then you know the so Radiant team uh, they're ended go up rallying around tinker. Earn charge. He's gonna take out from the urn. Viper's in too. Doom's in really tough place. He's gonna TP out. He'll be okay. Nope. Oh my god. Oh, not quite. You get to see the Doomlings. They both have a stun. The yes, they do. And there might be a. Is there a grave on deck? No. Nope. No mana for grave. And that is four for two. A huge, huge turn here. Dazzle's all by his lonesome. He's gotta get the hell out of there. <laughs> and there's still one little Doomling. <laughs> wow. That is, that's a huge XP change just early on, too. Yeah, Spectre, that's definitely Radiance, for sure. He picked yeah, up, after the way that fight went, yeah. I can't see it going any other way. Yeah, he picked up two kills in a very quick uh, span. I think he had the last on the tower the as well, tower. so... Quite a bit of gold going his way, and he's already got 3,300 towards that, uh, that relic, so... Decent Spectre game. Decent Spectre game. Speaking of uh, decent games... That stack Dyer's up for the dire side has been scouted out, and it looks like Tinker is going to go clear that at some point in the future. Some point in the future being right now. <laughs> hey, look what I found. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Take it, big guy. He's got full mana, too. He can just keep spamming. He's got to be careful, though. There's a lot. There's... All five of the enemies are in that area, but yeah, he'll take it out pretty quickly. They don't have any vision though, so I don't think they know until it's That's very it's unfortunate. It's, but yeah, he's, he's smart too. He's going, he's going into the river too. Stat. He knows better. Yep. And they finally caught on here, but... Yeah, quite a bit out of that. The damage has been done. Alright, so now for Doom, what is, what is his role in this game? Is he... Does he have to play Initiator here? Are we gonna see I think something? so. I mean, um, he went the stats, so he's a little more I tanky. would see a Blink Dagger. Yeah, I'm thinking... I think yeah, I would expect a, a Blink idea. Dagger. They already have two pairs of mana boots, so he's safe going with the Tranquils. Yeah. Uh, we may see a mech, we may not see a mech. I don't know, but I would imagine that we will see a Blink Dagger at some point in this game. Yeah, you really don't see a mech on over. I mean, he's got a, he's got a ring of regen, but I highly doubt that he's going to be a mech at this point. Could be a mech, could be a force staff. We won't know until he builds it. But, uh, could go either way. Poor Viper, man. He's doing so well, and I mean, <laughs> okay. So you, you did made the right call. Definitely the Blink Dagger here. A lot of farm going his way. Third net worth, just behind the Ember Spirit, ever so slightly. So he's gonna go for the safety. 
a safer route. And what about Lone Druid here? Where do you think he goes? He's got, he's got quite a bit. Okay, so maybe he's going Radiance too. He's got 3100. He might be going bank. Radiance. <laughs> so, uh, Midas and the Radiance. Well, they lost the last team fight, so they know they have to do something. I think if they had won that big team fight top, he might go for a safer item, but since they feel like they're behind, they feel like they need to get a big impactful item. And while Maelstrom's really nice, and while Armlet is really nice for Lone Druid, uh, Radiance is a big impactful item for Lone Druid, so not surprised to see him kind of go a little bit greedy here and uh, push for an item that's a little bit of reach. Yeah, and it looks like uh, right Mr. Viper is going to go for the PKP here, so he's getting sick of being picked on these team fights. Although, I mean, they've been dooming him repeatedly, Radiant so and <laughs> PKP obviously. Right no, no, sorry, just kidding. Belt of Strength, so he's going to go likely an SNY here. And they see the Doom here. That is not the backup here, buddy. We're going to Doom the Ember Spear. Oh, that might have been a not going to latch. They're just going to run him down. They're just going to run him down. Wow, they that's pop the drums. fast specter with drums. Oh my gosh. And Desolate does a lot of damage, folks. He needs folks. to survive here. He's so close to buying the Radiance recipe. Tinker comes in. Oh my gosh. Oh. Viper blows up the specter here. Mech popped, mech popped, and they're good to go again. Oh my gosh. He's just so tanky. They lose one, but they take out the carry, and they take out the A here, and they've, they've got to get back. Ogre's in very bad pace. <laughs> he goes down as well. Three for one. Over committing on the Ember Spear, coming back to bite him in the butt here. Yeah, against most teams, if you go that deep for the Ember Spear, you can say, well, at least we killed the one spot. But this game, I'm not so sure that uh, Lone Druid isn't the one spot. You yeah. talked about it a little bit earlier in the draft, where he could be the focal point of the team. And with him going Radiance, I think he might be the focal point of the team. So, yeah. um, you, you took out the two spot, which is like killing the mid laner in most games. Yeah. Uh, the in only, exchange the only thing that really hurts here for, for Ghost is that Spectre was literally 100 gold away from buying that, uh, that recipe. So, that's, that's a shot in the gun for sure. Yeah, I mean, picking up that extra 300 gold won't be a crippling slowdown for Spectre, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, oh, it's still, and the thing is, it's still, can, all things considered, it's a yeah. fantastic Radiance time still, but, I mean, it just kind of, it's kind of a little gut check. Yeah, there, it still know? hurts. <laughs> yeah, she'll pick it up here after finishing up this creep camp, so. Radiance inbound. The rest of the Radiance. Beat the lone druid just by so interestingly enough, um, uh, the dire team's actually leading in both experience and in uh, total team gold. So I'm not expecting to see that, uh, given how how I I, I feel that uh, Ghost has executed their lineup pretty much exactly how they wanted to. But after that last team fight, there's been a big change. He's going in, he's going to use that brand new ability there, Inferno Blade. I'm really glad that they kept the mini stun from level death. That would kind of stink. If yeah, that that. that was a really big deal for Doom. Uh, I think with this ability, they're trying to push him more towards uh, a carry role, or at least a right click style, because previously, auto attack Doom was very unpopular, uh, just because of how much utility he could bring with the rest of his kit. So with this new ability, we might see Doom move back more towards a right clicker as opposed to a utility pick. It'll well, be interesting to see as the game develops over the next now. couple months. Brian, Radiance Gaming is officially on. It's up on both sides here. Lone I am a fan finish. of Radiance Gaming. <laughs> Radiance and... Well, we only have one Midas in the game in the set. Well, Doom almost has a built-in Midas, so we'll count it. Alright, well, I think now they they realize, hey, team fighting, eh, let's wait for Spectre to get a little bit more farm. Tinker still has a little bit to go. And, okay, so Tinker picks up a point booster. Is that a, an Okor by chance? What do you think? I don't think it's going Could definitely there. be. Um, I'm trying to think of what it would block, uh, and I'm well, not seeing a whole bunch of stuff that's no, targeted. No, is the, the cooldown reduction, sir. Oh, the cooldown reduction, I'm sorry. I was thinking of the wrong item. Um, I don't know why you would build that on Tinker. Yeah. You already oh, never, yeah, have what am I thinking? It's, it's a bloodstone. We're both Yeah, both I, would, I would expect a different <laughs> item. 
All right, probably. Brain fart. Well, wow. He got an Augs change, didn't he? He got an Augs change. Yeah. I've never see. seen it in play, but maybe a, a man uh, can the, dream. Okay. A the man laser can dream. bounce actually from the Scepter upgrade is pretty badass, but that could be very effective against the Viper, the Ember. Yeah, that could be good. Uh, but probably a Bloodstone. All right, so is this a double mech? Cause there's a, a headdress down on the bounty hunter. A mech up, and then maybe. Nah, it's probably a pipe. Okay. Pipe for the to the tinker. That's that's uh, that's pretty understandable here. And there's a huge smoke here, and they could catch up the specter, and they do. They see her. Not ideal. Not ideal. There's no one around her. She's gonna. And it's in the area. Out. This could turn. This could turn very quickly. She's gotta hurry. Yep, they get one. Oh, oh just man. too much. The lone druid is just so strong. Viper right now. as well. The lone druid is just so strong. And he gets an easy route, and they're gonna take out two. Viper actually might go down. They're gonna actually lose three more than does. And the VOTs. Oh my gosh, that is so huge. Be able to uh, to TP onto the bear there, and at least make it an even trade here. Three for three on both sides. Yikes. Wow, that was incredibly brutal and incredibly quick. Yeah. That's kind of how they fight, though. And they actually only... Actually, no tracks have Oh, know. Ember's tail a little too long. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, buddy. no tracks committed there. That's uh, kind of The odd. Bounty Hunter, I think, was the first one to fall in that fight. The AA hit a really good ult, actually landing it on all three characters in the area. And then Spectre's Radiance Burn was most of what took down the Bounty Hunter and the Dazzle. A couple right clicks as well. Yeah, that's the only thing that kind of stinks. I mean, Bounty, he's not, he's not very tanky by any means, so... Look at 800 HP. No, so. he's not very farmed. He spent, yeah, he spent a lot of time out of lane, uh, not finding any money, and a lot of money has been spent on wards by bounty hunters. So, he's not going to be, you know, that pub style Dagon bounty hunter that we oh, see God. so often. He's definitely going to be more of a finesse utility style bounty hunter. And unfortunately, due to the the rotations, he's very under leveled. By comparison, Lone Druid is 17. Dyer's mid towers have technical Wow, that's a heck of a stat. Yeah, 47 games of one good is more than I would have been just in trouble. Oh, hell. Best tower. way to counter Viper? TP scroll. Same way you counter Bloodseeker. 75 oh, gold. I'm so glad the Bloodseeker era is over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. oh man, that was pretty rough. Uh, uh, I I didn't have a lot of significant trouble with him, but I play with my friends a lot, and like a, a similar group of my friends, and they tend to have a lot of problems with uh, that high ganking style of play. So we lost a lot of games to Bloodseeker during that frantic era. So glad to see that done. Now we're losing games to other things. So Viper definitely going for the more early fight build. He went for S and Y too, so he is tanky as can be here. So. Initiating him is not going to be what they want to do. Radiant He's going to end up taking that bottom, bottom tower, and there's towers. no way that they're able to contest that. So. Alright, so how do you feel? I mean, we're entering, we're well into the mid-game here. How do you feel? How do these teams stack up right now? And who do you think has the advantage later on? I'm, I'm looking at both teams, and I feel like they've both executed their roster sort of the way they wanted to. Um, MB is sitting at a slight advantage in terms of EXP, in terms of farm. Uh, but it's it's really hard to call how the late game's gonna go because you look at these rosters and you see a bunch of characters that are monsters in the late game. You have Ember Spirit, who is a late game devastator. You have Lone Druid, who can build six items. Oh, we have a stat here. Three competitive games, only died once, yeah, and they... had 55 kill participation, 52 kill participation. Andy That's very... a Andy... brutal stat. Andy was very certain that we'd see uh, an Ember ban here. Yeah. They, well, that, those were the we, we watched. I think at least one of those games where they they just stomped. He didn't, he yes. Just, he became colossal, and like you said, yeah, he's a late game monster. But Spectre is as well, and Druid is as well. Doom eventually yeah. getting that level. And Spectre, the Doom, and Tinker are all going to be really strong as well in the late game. So I don't actually know how this is going to go as the game progresses. I'm going to give Ghosts a slight advantage just because of how their supports will scale, uh, given the items that they've selected. Uh, like the bounty hunter not having a lot of items and going for a utility style is not going to be as effective in the late game as, no, say, the much. Ancient Apparition, who's going to have a lot of damage off of that Augs ult. Uh, but it's, it can go neck and neck at any point in the game, and I think we're going to have a really long game for the first time 
uh, in a while. We haven't seen a lot of long games, but both of these teams are sort of at a power dip where they don't want to be fighting for the next 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah. So we should see a lot of farming over that time. And actually, you mentioned uh, Ancient Apparition actually picked up the point booster slowly, slowly working towards head eggs, opted not to go for the Midas, buying pretty much most of the support items as Ogres. Kind of, he's, he's definitely finished off the four steps, so he's going a little more utility while A is forced to buy all the, the other support items, so. Yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll probably see Ogre switch to being the primary support now, yeah. as AA tries to save up for his Augs. Yeah, they're definitely going to need that ultimate for sure, and actually we were both incorrect, we were thinking, uh, a Blink Dagger on the Doom, he's going to go to get the early AC online here for his team to help, uh, help in those early team fights and eventually for, hopefully, for <laughs> base uh, deconstruction later on. Yeah, that'll be a really good item, especially since it gives bonus armor to his uh -oh. whole team. Uh, if they get a stun off right away, they, have... oh, they, get the do. they get the doom off. Oh my gosh, fantastic smoke. All committed up to the AA just to make sure he goes down. And geez, he's died a few times like that, hasn't he? It seems like deja vu over and over. He's at one in four, actually. He's not having a good time. Yeah, we saw the stat earlier where Ember Spirit was a combined uh, 30 and 1 and 22 over three games. Not today. Yeah. Not having the same kind of success against this team. And this is part of why this match was so anticipated. Both of these teams very good. Definitely able to check and counter each other as the game goes through. And we have a, a nice rush attempt here. And they're able to get it off pretty much without a hitch here. Oh, Ghosts really are not privy to what's going on here. Well, and that's... That's not going to be good. <laughs> that is not good for Ghosts. And they're going to give it to the Viper. Viper gets it. Okay. I was not expecting that, but um, he's pretty much been the frontliner here, so I guess it makes kind of sense. He's just so yeah, tanky and they want to they want to make sure they get the mech off through the doom. Yep. And it looks like uh, your old buddy Lone Tree is gonna go for an assault curse as well. So we see an AC, and we will raise you an AC. God, this it could bad. also be um, it could also be a Mjolnir, but I would like to see an AC. Just stack that armor with the Vlads, get really tanky. That's uh, true, that's very true. You know, there's a lot of mixed control. God, this Viper is just cold. He's just so, so tanky. Especially having the Dazzle back there, too, just to make sure that he's good to go. But I, I feel like they're going to put more priority on keeping the Ember alive. I, he still has a, a lot of farm for being picked off. He's 1 in 4, so... He's got 200 CS, so he's definitely doing okay. And this is not a good place for respect. He's going to have to get out quick. Nope, they're gonna turn the pops of the bands and there's so first. much damage. Wow. Viper's Viper's actually in a he's Viper's going right down. Right here. And Lone Druid. Lone Druid might pretty go well. down as well. Yeah, he's gonna oh, he go down well. here. He's gonna get stunned. So you gotta get the Ember Spirit and in the he not a great sleight of fist here and a double kill actually is almost imminent. Oh no! He's unable and there's a sleight of fist. Here we go. Doom he's okay, so he's gonna use the Doom on the they're gonna get to make sure the Viper goes down because Ember Spirit's definitely out of reach here. So they're gonna lose three on the back end of this. With only the supports going down for Ghost, so. Wow, that's. Yeah, that kind of not... the inverse of what we've seen in the Inviction fights. Exactly, that's not how I expected that to go. <laughs> See, the bounty going down so early in these fights, it's. it's he's. Oh, I, mean, I hate to say it, but he's almost useless. I mean, he's not getting tracks off. You know, he. And, uh, I mean, what does he really provide? I mean, he got the vision help scout that out, but. There you go. He's got a couple tracks up here. Manta's popped again. Spectre's gonna get the heck out of here, and I think, yeah, we have to cut their losses and get out of here. Man, they the all... Dazzle has just been committing great to himself over and over. Yeah, to really to no avail here. And actually, with the Tinker coming in, they pick up two kills. On... That's four heroes down. That's easily a tower, and they can pressure the T3 if they'd like to. The dire could They're gonna play it safe. So Spectre picked the up the casual Vit Booster, finished off the Manta, tower. and we can probably look for Seer to finish up the heart here very quickly. Still top of the network. That casual Vit Booster is really underrated for Spectre oh, especially, but for all Radiance characters in general. Uh, you don't even have to build the full heart. Just picking that up makes you tanky enough for like the first 30 to 40 minutes of the game, so you can really make the most of your Radiance. And we have ACs finished up on both sides here, so... I kind of would, I wouldn't mind seeing the the Mjolnir, but yeah, the AC definitely a solid pick as well. Can't go wrong. 
this dude, yeah. man. He's in my personal play, I do prefer the the AC, but I've seen a lot of pros go after Mjolnir, so it definitely goes both ways. Yep. And Ember going full damage here. He picked up the Blink Dagger, and now he's going for a crit stick. So let's see if he can try to pick off this. They know he's in there. No, he's not gonna go. For yep. The, he's not gonna go for the Searing Chains. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess from the Ember standpoint, I mean. They've been dooming you as much as they can. BKB really not all that useful. Like you could technically go for the Lincolns and maybe hope that no one breaks it previously to, uh, for the for the Dooms cast, but it's just re really wishful thinking here. So he's. I've go. never been a huge fan of Blink Dagger on Ember Spirit. I know I've seen it a lot, and it does help a lot with getting Chains Initiation. Um, but I would have liked to see you know finishing the Daedalus or a second Chrysalis even for that increased crit chance. Um, or like you said, some kind of defensive item over the blink dagger. Yeah. And there's the dagger. So he's committed. Tinker's really doing well actually. He's been coming in at team fights at the opportune moment and really turning these some of these fights around that they've had that initially looked not to be so great, so Yeah, I've been watching these fights and uh, it seems like every fight either Spectre gets a bunch of kills or Tinker gets a bunch of kills. And just because they lose one of them doesn't matter because the other one's able to pick up the slack and pick up the additional gold. Uh, so they're both doing very well as the game moves forward. Tinker a little bit further behind in farm, uh, but that's because they've been fighting more than giving Tinker's time to stack things and clear multiple camps with March. So hard on Spectre, so... Wow. 3k HP at 34 minutes. <laughs> this guy's colossal right now. The is absolutely huge, and they're looking to take that last. Be they're gonna take the last outer uh, outer tower here, making it very difficult. They're they might to... just go straight up to the tier three here. Um, I I feel like the Spectre thinks that, that he's unkillable at this point in time, and I would not disagree with that. Oh, trying to fight back for protection. They're trying to go for a trade here, and they don't have the creep wave. Tinker's gonna be able to stave him off for the time being as well. They're gonna need rotations. Yeah, they're gonna have to TP back in here. There goes Radiance Bottom Tower. Yep, so just bait the TPs. Oh, they did get the tower. Yep, bait the TPs and get out. Yeah, the the, the bear is just destroying things right now. The AC, the tower just melts. So Blink Dagger and actually yeah, full AC mobility. Yeah, AC Radiance. Full mobility on the uh, on the Ogre. Got four step and Blink Dagger. I don't know if we mentioned that. Yet. So he wants to be able to get up there. Ah, uh, poor stuff. AA. Oh, is he? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's gonna be the slowest after. Like, look time. at what the ogre has, and look at the AA. Yeah, I, I they honestly, definitely have not been that, that 2k from the blink dagger, I'd like to see those go to support items so that the, <laughs> so that the poor AA could actually finish that scepter, because that's gonna be yeah, more, more integral to their yeah. team fights as, uh, as the game goes on, like you mentioned. Well, I think they're looking at it for the long game, and they recognize that at 50 minutes, he's going to have it. Regardless of what happens in the next 20 minutes, he's going to have that uh, that Augs Scepter at some point. And this game is probably not going to be decided in the next 10 or 20 minutes, uh, but in the phase sort of after all those supports finish their core items. Well, maybe the next 20 minutes, but probably not in 10. Yeah, definitely not in 10. All right, so next item for Spectre... I mean, BOTs just it seems kind of... MKB. MKB? MKB or Butterfly. The the Viper has picked up a Butterfly, so it's oh, really wow. a question of whether or not the Spectre yeah. wants, to hit the butterf or wants to hit the Viper, or the Spectre wants to be uh, completely unkillable. I would anticipate seeing the MKB just because of how tanky the Spectre is already, um, but yeah. I would definitely understand the, the Butterfly as well to dodge out of most of the damage on that team. I am 100% agree with you. And, okay, so Tinker um, opts to level up the Dagon. I, I kind of was hoping to see a Hex, but um, he's going to go for the Dagon build, uh, assuming an E-Blade, because he already has the Ghost Scepter, so... Le probably leaving the yeah, Hex before the, the game item. started. Before the game started, just looking at the drafts, I was anticipating a faster Hex as opposed to a Dagon. Yeah, me too. But the Ember Spirit has not been as big of a threat as I thought it was going to be uh, in the pregame. So yeah, I right. definitely understand the fact that he is not going after that Hex because uh, they have all the disabled they need out of the Doom. And even if they don't get the Doom off on the Ember, he hasn't really been impacting teamfights in the way that you'd expect 
So uh, the, the Dagon may be more effective for finishing off some of those low health heroes that we've seen running around the map for both sides. I definitely get that point, but at the same time, I feel like they've been really prioritized in keeping the Ember down. And like you said before, oh, is that a troll? <laughs> I've never seen that in a competitive game. <laughs> Oh, Looks like Lord. he was trying to ping something out to his team and uh, <laughs> accidentally pinged something out to the whole game. All right, that is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and some deep, deep <laughs> and sincere apologies coming out. <laughs> wow. wow, that's... Uh, Had they actually... If they, that's that rough. was serious. I, for a split second, I actually thought that was serious. <laughs> <laughs> it's messed up, no, man. no. It's when we watch up. these games, I I expect both these teams to have a certain level of professionalism. Even though this is, thank you, game is hard. <laughs> even though this is uh, amateur Dota, I haven't seen a lot of bad mannering out of most of these teams, and no. they seem to approach these games with a lot of mutual respect. So Definitely. I would anticipate that was in fact. I mean, they both of them have been uh, have had quite a bit of success in this early. Uh the early part of the season so there's definitely uh, mutual respect from both sides so it's good to see that a small misclick isn't gonna come back to haunt them <laughs> <laughs> how embarrassing would that be oh my gosh uh wow that is not those stats Damn. are not from the games that we've casted no but uh, I have seen a lot of success. Or I have seen a lot of Spectre success throughout the uh, throughout the season. I think the only Spectre game that I got to cast, the Spectre did not do well. Uh, it was, I believe, the last game we cast where the Spectre ended up going for that sad build of uh, <laughs> the sad realization the, the that I'm not going to get and anything done. <laughs> and the Vanguard Defusal. and then the Defusal. Okay, so Spectre goes Defusal. That makes sense. That'll give them a lot of chase for catching the lone druid, who's been kind of difficult to find in team fights. He's been getting very good positioning behind his bear, behind the viper, uh, so that defusal will make it a lot easier for them to chase down that bear. He might go. Yeah, he probably just upgrade that right away too. Might as well. The, the, yeah, the, it's... The, the, the gain from upgrading to level two is really significant. Definitely worth the investment. So. Yeah. Depends on what you're going to be using it for and when you build it in the game. Early game, you generally don't upgrade it a lot because you're going to be wanting to purge very frequently, so you want to have 16 purges. Uh, but in the late game, he's building it for mana burn and an occasional purge. He's probably not oh. going to be able to use all eight of these purges. The dream, oh, Ryan. Oh, the oh dream. my lord. I did not think I this was going to be a thing. Radiant's top tower's taking hits. Oh my gosh. Lost wow. Lost bear to attack at any place on the map. I was not expecting that. He's going to be contesting Viper Spectre's farm with the bear. He's going to be shutting down the jungle farm and uh, harassing out the supports while safely farming in his own jungle. That is a really, really nifty thing to see. Would you say it's cute? <laughs> oh, they're going all another I would here. say it's freaking adorable. Yeah, they went all But a little there. bit of a miscue there. Inspector, not afraid to throw those defusal charges after the bear. No, yeah, that was the very first thing she did. That was literally the first thing. <laughs> defusal short, da uh, spectral dagger to slow it down, and they went all in. And no hesitation there. Hey, man, 300 so gold, 300 that, gold. That does I make me think that... I don't yeah. care where you are in the game. 300 gold is nice any time. Yeah, it definitely makes me think that the defusal 2 will be not far and off there it because is. of uh, how readily that was committed. The support dream, AA finishes up the scepter. Okay, so now does Ember go for a defensive item? I mean, he's still pretty squishy, relatively speaking, to the rest of the, the cores in this game. I... It's hard to say. I would like to see it, but I don't think it's necessary if... I mean, they've had a lot of really good Ember play in this tournament, so clearly this player's comfortable on the hero. Yeah. And if they think that they can outplay the opposing team, I would not be surprised to see another damage item. Balls deep, man. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, you need to take certain risks. They're down towers, but they're not irreparably, irreparably far behind. So, Gosh. Uh, this next item out of the Ember will show us sort of how they're feeling about the game. Uh -oh. Hello, Bounty. I was, I was oh, wow. just about to comment about how poor the supports were on Morbid. And <laughs> he gets blown up again. The poor guy's been working on finishing up that pipe for <laughs> about 20 minutes. Now. Forever. <laughs> it's been close to 20 minutes. 
And Dagon's gonna be level 5 very shortly here. He's got 3k gold stash. And they're going all in. They're gonna doom the dazzle. They don't want anybody getting healed here. And they're taking two. This is Rax. This is Rax. Gonna buy back this on the Viper, buy back on the dazzle. Doom's gotta be careful. He's gotta get out of there. Spectre's oh, Spectre's gonna go, gonna go down. Yeah, that's two buybacks though. Uh, they made one too deep. They did not finish off that tower, so oh, wow. I mean they they burnt a lot of gold, but oh, they went very slide. deep on that, great and they slide. got punished. Yeah, they're gonna get three. Wow, that's gonna be an offensive item for that yeah, Ember Spirit. I, I, I would He's agree. gonna be feeling good after that. I would agree wholeheartedly. Two buybacks expended, um, Viper and the Dazzle, not terrible, and unfortunately, yet again, no track kills because the bounty was incapacitated prior to that engagement. So. That's probably the most impressive thing, you know, the bounty hunter's just really not been able to do anything. It's It's been so long since he's no, been able to... No, he was big in the early game, but he's really been choked out. Yeah, and here comes Tinker to the shrine. It's been purchased twice in 47 professional games, so this is a treat. Relish this moment, savor it, Brian. May never be done again. Well, the bear's still alive, even though Lone Druid's dead. <laughs> I had no idea the bear stayed alive. I thought it yeah, died with Druid, but I mean, yeah, apparently the bear just keeps going. Yeah, he's, he's the Energizer bear now. And they're gonna. They're, I mean, the, he may as well not even be dead. AL's gonna go in and scout out this Roshan. Actually, oh man, that Ember is careful. not feeling good. Ember's gotta be good. They have to disengage you, actually. In guard. They're, they're gonna finish it off. They're gonna finish it off. They're gonna save the Ember Spirit. They're gonna grave him. Doom knows exactly what's they're going on here. He's gonna be able to finish him off. There's two oh, down already. Man. Nathan Viper's gonna grab the Aegis. Ember's out. He, he doesn't have any remnants to buy back, actually. He's not gonna expend it. And another kill for the Tinker. Viper's down, too. Cold Feet procs. Spectre's all in. And they're gonna try to clean up this lone Druid, too. Bounty Hunter very low. Might go down just the Radiance damage alone. With the Aegis popping, Viper's back in, and they're gonna take out the AA very quickly here. <laughs> this is not an ideal matchup for a Viper, though. And Ember comes back in no, with a buyback. No, this Spectre is a monster. He is, he is, but Ember bought back. He's doomed again, though. I really have to run. Tinker's hot on his trail here, and there's a Spectral Dagger. They're gonna run him down. About another four seconds on the Doom. Yep, and he's out, too. Wow, oh my gosh. Ember's dead for a minute Ooh. and a half, and yeah, Viper's dead for back. a minute and a half. This is, is gonna be Rax. That's critical mass here, man. Four down, you got the Aegis, but at what cost? I mean, <laughs> essentially they killed, what, six heroes? Because the Aegis and the buyback? That's, that just takes uh, the window. Yeah, the Ember skills. buyback and death. And that's, then that's five kills, seven, I think. I, did they killed the Bounty Hunter off in the beginning again, right? They might have, actually. Yeah, that's even worse. So, definitely Rax's all cores are down. Yikes. And Viper has no buyback, so Lone Druid's the only one. And he's short on gold. Alright, looks like they're not gonna go for the GG push. Double AC? Is that, is that a mistake purchase? That is a double AC. Um, I understand why Spectre's doing it, just because... Doom cannot always be there, and attack speed is just generically good, but Gosh, uh, I would have liked this to see poor Dazzle. He has to grave himself again. The Tinker has just been on his case the whole time. And they still have plenty of time before and anybody's he's... up here. They're, they're going to make up for Megas here. Uh, so a lot of times when you watch uh, competitive games that are very close, it's hard to tell who's winning. And one thing that I like to look at is the supports more than the top uh, top farmers on the team. And if both supports on one team are significantly under the supports on the other team, that team tends to lose the game. They may not be behind at that instant, but it does tend to come back and bite you when your supports are ineffective. And this game, we definitely saw Team Ghosts have the way more effective supports. Uh, Ancient Apparitions ult was massive in this game compared to what Bounty Hunter and Dazzle were able to do. So we'll see how the support picks go down in the next game. We'll see what kind of ways they want to shore up those weaknesses and uh, if the draft strategies end up differently. Yeah, well, and I, I rarely get to pat myself on the back, but it definitely, it came down to decision making and them committing on that Roche after being scouted out by the AA. I mean, it's just, that just proved to be the end for them. So I'll take a quick break here and then we'll get into game two.